Hello, Jamie from Inky and Scrappy sharing with you today my snow globe magic iris on a platform pop-up sped up tutorial and then the actual finished card that I created with it. So if you are interested in the real time, I will have that video clipped or linked below. If you already watched it and don't want to watch the replay, which is totally fine, hop forward to that five and a half minute mark and that is where I actually start decorating that platform pop-up magic iris snow globe. So for this one, I'm not really going to give you the instructions on how to put the magic or the magic iris together and or the platform pop-up. If you've made it this far, you either know how to do it already or you're going to need way more instruction than I can handle. And so Mon Fon makes some gorgeous tutorials on those. I also have a real-time tutorial on how I do my magic iris. Although I think I did do a lot better in explaining it on my real-time tutorial. It just takes a lot more words and time than I can get in five minutes. So I do use Brad's for my magic iris. I find it works better for me. I live in Minnesota. We deal with those cold temps. It gets super dry in our house in the winter because we heat. And in the summer, it just, I don't know. I have issues with any kind of a dry adhesive actually sticking for the long term. So I ended up finding how to do the Brad method somewhere online. And so I made my own template, figured it out, and went that way. So, I mean, the little sausage pieces already have those little X's in them. So it's basically just sticking your Brad in there and then figuring out your where they're going to attach onto that one wheel. So I've already made myself a template that I just line everything up, punch the holes in it, and call it good. So once you have everything lined up, you will be able to see that it should, I didn't have stabilizers on there, so the one popped out, but it should move well just with those two pieces. And it, I have no issues with it not closing all the way if I've done it properly. Now, it once in a blue moon, it might catch on a brad head if you bend those. I tried bending the little tabs back because I didn't want them hanging out of my snow globe. I should have just snipped off the little parts that were kind of overhanging on the snow globe. I will do that from here on out because I tried bending them back and then I had so many issues with that bottom one wanted to pop out. So I'd have to like peel it back, go with my little reverse tweezers and pull it back through and then I ended up because when I bent it straight the paper was 80 pound Nina classic press solar white cardstock it just didn't have enough I don't know strength to kind of hold that piece straight so I came in with another piece of scrap cardstock and just did a little strip on there to hold that little tab straight and that worked beautifully so I could fix it without having to tear apart the whole magic iris. So if that's, I have issues with those things sometimes not working as well. So those are some of my tips and tricks. Now the other thing is I, when I did, when I tried to figure out the magic iris, at least for building it with the brads, I did one in acetate so I could see everything and how it worked. And so when I did that one, I also did a sample on white and I sat there because I wanted to see where I needed the ink when I ink things and because sometimes when you ink things they don't I don't know they don't hold together well or if I was doing clouds in the scene and I wanted to be so I wanted to know where I needed to have those things show up on my thing so I know that I have a lot of wiggle room on that outside of the magic iris sausages I guess and you can clip off anything that might hang out a little bit. So if your brad placement wasn't exactly in the middle where it was supposed to be and you have a little bit of overhang, you can definitely just clip off a little bit and it's not going to affect that actual magic iris in the center. So I did end up adding in some Big Mama foam tape on those back brackets. So the only part you can have adhesive on the magic iris on the back is on those three little brackets. So because I didn't know exactly what I was going to be doing in the back here, I wanted to pop it up just a little bit from my background piece. So 
I'm just going to add some Big Mama foam tape on there, and then I will line up that circle. So my circle is a circle, the largest circle, I think it's one of the largest circles that I have for from Spellbinders. If you have a different set or different circles, whatever works. So I could have gone with a smaller one. I just wanted to go with one that was the same size as my circle because it would just hide all the stuff from the background or from the back side. So the other thing with this one is, yeah, see how I ended up folding that one in because I was worried that it was going to catch on the base and that was my biggest error. <laughs> it, it ended up being um, not the not the greatest move on my part. So when I ended up, it ended up coming out of the little channel and it was a mess, but I got it in the end. Anyways, so I'm going to add on my back side here because I don't want to go over that circle part with my platform pop-up face. Now, if you see, I do realize I have the back, the front side and not the back side. So the, my back side doesn't have a T in it. You could definitely add a T if you want to put something back there. I just knew that you, you're not going to see anything back there anyway. So I did not put a T in my back part there. Later on, I do go back in with a platform pop-up partial cut. That was the like the bottom part of it where it's flat, no hole to kind of cover that up. And then you can't see it. So for my actual adding the other half of the platform pop up, I'm going to line it up on the top. Usually I do this on the bottom. So it was a little bit backwards, but I wanted to make sure that my top was going to line up good. And then I will. And this is where I realized that my fold on that back one was not very great. I didn't crease them very well. And so I ended up, it's kind of a little bit wonky. It ended up not catching very well on when I pop up the platform pop up. So the other thing with this one was I did not use a heavy enough cardstock for my base. I did use 80 pound Nina classic crest solar white for the whole thing from, except for my actual snow globe add on and that back piece, that back circle, I ended up using a metallic cardstock, which was heavier weight, but the snow globe adds quite a bit of weight to the top. And so I should have used a heavier cardstock for my base just because it needed some more bulk. Now adding in the belly band, I don't know if it's a belly band. Is it the collar? I don't know. The hillside add on piece that I cut straight across here, which I explained in my other video, but I took the, the hillside and kind of made this belly band for it. I just cut it off straight on top. So it would cover up that scallop, but you definitely don't need that piece. You could just recut the platform pop up, just that front panel piece, and then glue those together, you know, put those together and then just put them on as kind of like a, a wrap around it, if that is what you want to do. So I had the hillside add on, so I just used it. And then right now I'm coming in with some ground espresso distress ink and I'm going to add some ink blending on top of that wood grain cardstock. It helps bring out the pattern to the wood grain and, you know, gives it a little bit more interest, I guess. So for this piece here, if I would have thought ahead of time, Again, I had no plans on what I was going to do with this one once I was done. I was just making it to see if I could get the magic iris onto a platform pop-up. And so I probably would have added this piece before I put the magic iris in if I thought about it. Because I had kind of thought about doing a hill, like a snowy scene, and then I would have just done a snowy hill on top of that part of it. But I ended up going this route instead. And so I wanted to cover up that white base piece with some wood grain cardstock. I just added some tick marks with my pencil, hoped for the best that I got it fairly close, which I did. I wasn't too worried if I was a little bit under, like if I had it too long, because I could have wiggled it down into my platform pop up a teeny tiny bit. But it ended up being cut almost perfectly. Of course, when I die cut that extra piece for the base. I didn't cut the whole thing. I wasn't too worried about it. I figured I could cover it up with images later on, so I didn't worry about it too much.
And then for my front piece, my front T there, I'm just going to add in a branch to kind of help build the scene. And then I will add in the little arrow already onto the little tab. So I did that in wood grain as well, so it kind of coordinated with the rest of my magic iris slash platform pop-up. So for this one, I struggle with what to do with the magic iris once I have it made. Now, um, sometimes I know what I want to do with it, and sometimes I don't. And this one I really didn't know. I didn't want to put a sentiment in the middle. I wanted it to be something that you wouldn't have expected to be there to be there. And so by adding the nest right over, kind of like overlapping the top here, I could little tuck the little birdie in there and then you wouldn't see it once it was closed. So I was kind of looking at doing both of them in there and then I decided I, I was good with just the little one in there and go from there. And then I'm just gonna add in my branch over the top of that to kind of make that all work together. And so I had die cut, I had colored and then die cut out some of the foliage for the build a wreath, the large build a wreath, wreath builder set from Lawn And I just decided the greenery was too big for, for my scene overall. So I ended up doing the greenery that comes with the winter bird stamp set. And I was pleasantly surprised that it cut out very well on the brother's can and cut. It's one of those that I always worry about because it's not a normal image. And so it's just a lot of little lines. These ones actually cut out really good. The second set that I did did not cut out as good, but for the most part, they cut out well enough that they worked. It's just, they weren't all the same. So it still worked out all right. So I decided that that other little bird should maybe go up there too. So then you get like two little surprises on the inside. So I'm going to place my little birdie first and then add in my branch over the top after I have my little birdie placed. This way I knew that it was going to end up being where I needed it to be. Plus my branch wasn't in the way when I was trying to place that bird. Then coming in with some more of that foliage and realizing that I can't put it on the end. It's just going to overhang that magic iris too much and I really don't want to hinder that movement at all. And so I ended up going where I went with that one. And so for some pops of color here, I am going to bring in that berry branch as well. So I stamped the berry branches with some crunchy leaf ink from Lawn Fawn, which is also alcohol friendly. And then I colored in the berries with my Uhuhu bulletin and markers as I did with my birds. So I used, I can, I can tell you old numbers because I can remember those better than their new numbers. So I used the 69, 71, 74, or 72, 72 and 74 combo from Uhuhu for my bluebirds. And then for the reds, I used 15, 14, 12, and 13. I don't know exactly what order the red ones go in off the top of my head. I usually scribbled them onto a side sheet to make sure. I mean, the 15 is always the darkest shade, but Anyways, those were kind of my colors. And then for my branches, I want to say I did 92 and 98. All of those would be in color combos that are already on my blog under the Uhuhu marker combo page. So if you are interested, that's where you can find those. And then once I am happy with, for the most part, all of my layout pieces, I'm going to come in with that collared piece or I don't know, what do they call it a collared piece? I don't know. With my base piece here to cover up that white, I'm going to press that on. Now, I should have decided where my sentiment was going to go before I got this far, but that's not how I roll. So once I decided, and it, it added some more stability to that base because my cardstock wasn't heavy enough. It did add some weight at least, so it wasn't tippy or it didn't feel as tippy. I'm going to add in that plain white piece 
for my top piece there. So it covers up that little hole where the T would go. Now you see this is where I'm like it's a little bit kitty wampus, which is funny that it didn't bend, it didn't bow, it worked fine for building it. It just was when it was like popped up, it wasn't, it didn't want to stay popped up as well because it wasn't catching on the side pieces, like it wasn't tight enough, I think. And so I went in with some just scrap paper shims and kind of added those towards my joints, like the middle part on the back, and that seemed to help quite a bit there. So I'm just going to continue to build my scene. I wanted to make sure that it looked full enough and that it wasn't just like open space up above. If I would have done this one differently, maybe I would have gone with a plain cardstock instead of that glossy cardstock. And maybe I would have added some clouds onto my actual platform pop-up or my snow globe part. But, you know, I wasn't really planning ahead on this one. So sometimes we get what we get and we don't throw a fit, right? So I just wanted it to work and it did work. So I was happy with all of that. So once I have this piece on there, I am happy with how it opens and it closes. And then I will figure out my sentiment. I had also already cut the little, from that snow globe add-on, the little bracket plate which I was like, well, that would work, but I couldn't find a sentiment that I loved enough to put in there or one that was small enough. I probably could have shopped my stash and found something that would work, but I ended up deciding to go with Seasons Tweetings onto my cardstock or onto my base here, my platform pop-up. And this is where I said I should have probably figured out what my sentiment was beforehand. So I am going to try to stamp this onto that you know, 5,000 layers of cardstock into the misty, and it doesn't want to stay still. It wants to kind of move around. It wants to pop up, even with all of the magnets that I ended up bringing in. And so I got it kind of centered, knew that it was going to pop up a little bit, and I just hoped for the best. If it wasn't going to work, I was more than okay with just coming in with a banner style and making covering it up it ended up working i even double stamped it which you know was a bit risky I, it was fine so i did recut that i don't know is it called a nameplate from the magic iris snow globe add-on out of that glittery cardstock so it's glitter cardstock from envelopes.com i think it's a luxe brand I did come in with my reds and add some red to it just to kind of make it a little pop of color onto that base there. And of course it has that glittery shimmer to it. And so I'm stamping this with my Onyx Black ink, like my Versamark Onyx Black ink, or Versafine. Um, I should have heat set it with some clear embossing powder. I ended up after chores, so this sat for three hours before I came back to it, and it, I mean, it looked fine. I didn't smudge it at this point. It was still wet three hours later, so I did end up re-stamping, I know, re-stamping over the top, freehanding it. It actually lined up perfectly. See, somebody was watching out for me, and heat setting it with some clear embossing powder just so it won't smudge again. I did end up adding some sickles to it for some shine and some snow maybe. And then of course I did cut off the tines to some copper or some antique, I think there's antique brads that kind of add, you know, add just a little bit to it and adhered those with some collage medium. All right, well, that is what I have for you today. If you have questions, please ask for them below. I hope you have an amazing day. Keep getting inky. Take care. Bye.